YouTube, Topaz Jace back for another EP review, and this one's to that Denzel Coy 13, the EP, man, and I'm giving this one the good light as I like Denzel Coy and such, dude, but yet the music here is just not it, dude, like, honestly, didn't really feel any of this production. A bunch of these songs on here was super brief, you kind of get that essence that he's trying to build up towards an album that a lot of people are saying that it's probably never going to come out, like, it constantly getting postponed and all of that stuff. Even with some decent concepts, some decent lyricism, it really just didn't save this project all the way around to keep it 100, dude. But one thing that I really did enjoy about this project and such, though, is for all of those people out there who's trying to say that they love that lo-fi sound that XXX Tinta Sean is always putting out there and such, saying that it's just great and this is just the type of music that he creates when I've been telling you that it's amateur 100%. Denzel Corey is ultimately just proving my point with this project, dude, because he's going for that same exact sound, but yet he's doing it on a high quality level. Like, he's showing you that it can be done on a professional quality. Like, that whole lo-fi sound that people are trying to be up on, you're just exposing yourselves for being pole jockers for these individuals who's making less than subpar music. But let's go ahead and break this joint down from the top and such with that blood Bloodshed. Well, on this song, he's pretty much just spitting here, and it does give you a good showcase of what he's good at when it comes to spitting, and he's not necessarily a great punchline rapper and such, dude. Now, he does have his moments, like, when he's saying how real he is and everybody else is anime. That's pretty dope, because anime being animation, that's honestly not real people. But that's honestly just not where the strength is for him. Where his strength is, is in his vocab, on some of these things that he he's rhyming with, like how he was able to rhyme syphilis with ignorance, infamous, feminist, like how he was breaking that down. A lot of people don't use these kinds of wordplays, don't use this kind of vocab all too often. So that's where I give him the most props and that's his ultimate strength. It's just not so much the punchlines. The next song is that Hate Government in which the way I look at this song is look at that song that Kanye West did, that New Slaves. It got that same kind of energy to it, but yet this is a lot less catchy, but yet Get better lyrics all the way through there. As some of the things that he's saying is how he's anti-government, pro-Asada. That was dope for those of you who don't know. That's Asada Shakur, Tupac's aunt, I do believe she was, and all of that stuff, dude, who's pretty much down there in Cuba who had to escape from America because the government was out there literally trying to assassinate him. And then how he continues this ball of pretty much saying how this world is all about the dollar and how that's equal to Allah. Allah meaning God for Muslims and such, man. How he continued that ball with that vocab and such, man. And the fact that it was a pretty potent one as well, man. Especially when you start breaking down the knowledge that came along with it and such, man. That was pretty cool. Sadly, this song and others that was on this project was just cut super brief and such and honestly just want solid songs either but we're gonna touch more on that a little later too. The next song is Equalizer where pretty much the concept behind that is him talking about how nobody cares for him and he's returning that in essence with violence and such as well man and which that's honestly the way things need to be and such dude like too many people go with that whole Obama joint where like they go low we go high like nah when somebody is doing nothing for you, when people are crapping on you and not caring for you, then you got to hit them with some of their own medicine in order to continue on with you. I mean, when you look at all of these cowardly people out here, all of these white supremacists who's gonna go around and kill children, kill the elderly and all that stuff, you cannot reply with that with love, you did. You got to go at them because the only thing that they will ever respect is when somebody goes directly at them and make them feel for their lives like you feel for yours from them and such, dude. Like, that's the only thing they understand. The next song is Heartless, and this is a song where he's really just spitting on it, but yet he has one particular dialogue that's rather dope where it's more of a wordplay based off of dinosaurs and all that, saying how he'll lay you down like the dinosaurs, he'll roll up the weed like an herbivore, and how he feels as though he's a Megazord, for those who don't know, that's like the Power Rangers from back in the day when they had the dinosaurs that came together as one big robot, the Megazord and such. All one big world play that he expanded on in that one verse and such, man. That was pretty solid. But yet, my issue with all of these songs that I've talked about, man, is the production was just not 
there. The overall feel of the songs, they're supposed to be super hype, but yet with the production not being dope, it really takes away from a lot of that. Really the only song off this man that got a little bit of replay value to it is that Zeltron 6 billion joint. Because that production isn't half bad, it's not great, but then he just meshes well with it with his flow and his delivery and overall comes about pretty decent. As this is just another song where he's merely just spitting, but he has his moments like when he's saying that you could be a statue and never be as hard as he is. That was pretty solid. And then how he said got a brain made of steel. And how he'll hit you is like the bricks that's being shot by Shaquille O'Neal and such. That was pretty cool when you look at the movie that Shaq did before in the day, man. It was called Steel. He was supposed to be a superhero. Like, it's all tied together and such. That was pretty solid of a ball. But yet, in the end, not phenomenal. Honestly, none of these songs are ones that I would recommend downloads or purchases or anything like that. Still peep it out just to get a better understanding of music, but that's honestly why I'm giving this one the real light. It's really just not that good of a project. But a quick recap here, man. The pauses that I'm taking from this is the concepts and the vocab that he has pretty solid, but yet the negatives is it's not very good of a project here, dude. But this concludes today's review, man. And now we're gonna jump into a brief instrumental from underground producer Non-Instrumentals before we jump into some of your questions. Head says that he feels as though that Vince Staples is easily the best that's out here right now dropping music and this project is so amazing that he dropped that I gave a poll review for and such. And you know what? It's all good, man. You can like whatever you like. I'm not going to knock your opinion and all I do. But my question is, when was the last time you've heard anything negative that you did not like about Vince Staples? Because what you're saying is something that a poll jocker would say. And that's honestly why you got to ask these kinds of questions. But yet, I ain't knocking anybody's opinion, man, to each their own. And you know a bunch of people asking me about the BET Awards and such, man, in which I never watch the joint, and I usually do make, like, a special about it, but yet, all of these award shows are just straight up dimming on me to the point that I'm caring so much less from the BET Awards to the XXL freshman class and all of this stuff, man. Like, even though people are still watching for it, I'm really not caring that much. But yet, I did see a bit of it because my family's in town and they was ultimately watching this joint. Like, I did walk in on the new edition special joint that they had on it. That looked kind of cool. I did overhear a bunch of the comedy that the host was doing. And she is rather funny, man. She has her moments. She's not the greatest comic or anything. But yet, I do like her more than most. I did see Bruno Moore's performance and that was pretty dope and such. He's one of the better performers that's out there right now, point blank, period, no matter what genre you talking about. From what I've seen, man, this honestly comes off as a better version of the award shows that I've been seeing for quite some time and such, but yet I think it's too little too late for me to actually get back into it and actually kill who's winning anything. I hope you enjoyed the show. You can follow me at Twitter up there, and you can go to downloadpads.com, that's down there, to read today's article.